Welcome to Model Engineering for Beginners, Part 47. Turning in the lathe, plain and simple. The title is nothing to do with any of my past girlfriends. It's just some plain turning in the lathe and the job is very simple. For this demonstration I'm using my Smart and Brown lathe and I've slackened off the belts and this has always proven to be a good idea as I'm not a machinist. If I get it wrong, instead of the lathe demolishing the lathe tool and possibly injuring me, the chuck stops. And it has worked over the years because I do have at least four of my original nine fingers left. For this demonstration though, I have slackened off the twin drive belts inside the lathe a bit too much and coupled with the fact that I am using a thing called a negative rake tool this is what happens when I try and take a cut. The chuck stops spinning which is what you don't want. I reduced the cut considerably and then I thought it would be a good idea to drill a centre in the work so I could support the outer end with a live centre. But as you've just seen the lathe stopped again so this is no good at all. When I withdrew the cutting tool I had a choice, I could either turn the piece of metal or drill the end of the piece of metal. I withdrew the cutting tool and decided just to drill the centre hole. Then I tightened the belts. Doing this makes the lathe's transmission a bit noisier. But now I can take serious cuts. Negative rake tools like this one, which is actually too big for this tool post, are often used in industry. But there is a big difference between the home workshop and an industrial application. Normally these negative rate carbide tools can run to much higher speed but require a coolant service and a more powerful lathe. I've changed the cutting tool to this one. This is a very simple carbide tip tool. It's the right size for the tool holder and it cuts much better. When I move the saddle's hand wheel manually, instead of using the power traverse, I can feel how much less power I need to apply to the hand wheel to cut the metal. This tool isn't particularly sharp and I'm not using a cutting lubricant. Well I am but I didn't put any on for the purposes of the video and the tool stalled. By winding the tool backwards and turning the lathe by hand in reverse it freed off the tool. I applied some lubricant and now once again it's cutting ok. You may be wondering what I'm making. I'm not just turning this piece of metal for fun. I'm making a flagpole mount for my grandson. At the time of Queen Elizabeth II's Platinum Jubilee, my grandson bought a flagpole for the garden. The part of the flagpole mounting that broke was the adjusting system that we didn't need anyway. I tried to stick it together, then I tried to weld it together by melting the parts with my small blowtorch, but it was having none of it. I think this is glass-filled nylon. The only thing to do is to make a new pole support and fix this to the existing base, and it should be OK. This is a bit of a tip really, but it doesn't always work. I'm cutting coming towards the tailstock, which is the wrong direction for this cutting tool. And you can clearly see that the surface finish is much better. I figured out that I need this part to be 37mm in diameter, and I nearly got it right. For all the keyboard warriors, experts and perfectionists out there, yes, I am aware that the outside diameter of the work is not as was originally intended. But this is not a precision part, it's not a piston, it's not a cylinder and it's definitely not part of a high speed, high performance internal combustion engine or a spacecraft. It's a simple mounting for a flagpole and what I'm doing at the moment is drilling a hole all the way through the centre of it. And as previously shown, I'm using plenty of this cutting lubricant. The good news is, all the smoke generated by the cutting lubricant and the temperature of the work when I was using the negative rake tool has now dissipated in the workshop and I can see what I'm doing. As I'm drilling this hole I'm putting quite a lot of pressure on the job and the resultant friction causes the part to heat up. This is a problem with engineering because you have to remember that if you heat up a part it gets bigger and when you work with higher tolerances this can be a problem. I do not use industrial coolant in my workshop, I just don't like the smell of it. On this job I'm using an aerosol can metal cutting spray but I don't really like it as it comes out of the aerosol far too fast. After drilling the first hole all the way through I'm enlarging it now with a one inch diameter drill and here after I've finished the job as you can see it's hot but not that hot. 
Now I need to take some dimensions from the original part that broke. Looking at these dimensions, I can see that the overall length of the part needs to be three and a half inches or just above, but the hole in the part to take the flagpole needs to be three and a quarter inches, which means that the flagpole will have a ridge on which to rest. What I'm doing here is setting the boring tool to three and a quarter inches. And here, during the measuring operation of the boring tool, I noticed that there are graduations on the tool itself, so I didn't need to use the steel rule. In this clip, I'm checking the diameter of the flagpole itself. I didn't bother switching on the vernier caliper, I thought I'd save the battery. I'm just going to use the other end of the vernier caliper to get the hole to the right size. After taking the last cut towards the chuck with the boring bar, without altering any of the settings, I brought it back the other way. This removes a very small amount of material, and now this hole should be the right diameter to fit the flagpole. The next part of the job involves reversing the part in the chuck to cut off this excess part, because it's not required. You may be wondering why I'm not using the parting tool that I have in my hand. The reason for this is the parting tool itself is too big for the tool holder and this is what happened one day when I was using it. I need to buy another one and a smaller parting tool. Instead I'm just going to remove the end of this piece of tube using the negative rake tool that I originally started with which is also too big for this tool holder. To get the cutting tip of this tool to centre height I'm having to drop the tool holder too far down in the tool post and that's how I broke the parting tool. Once I'd done that, I used a chamfer tool to just get rid of any sharp edges. I should have mentioned earlier that most of these clips are running much faster than they actually did when I was doing the job. I turned the speed up in the video editor to four times normal speed on most of the clips. During the clip that you've just seen where I was using the internal chamfer tool, the lathe was running very slowly. It's time now to see whether the part I've made fits the flagpole. And the good news is, yes it fits it very well indeed, it's actually a piston fit, whereas the pole was a rattle fit in the original plastic part. Here's a finished job sat on the bench. I've mounted this part to the original glass filled nylon base, and I ground a shallow channel in the base so the tube has something to sit in. I drilled and threaded a hole at one end of the flagpole mounting, and fitted a stainless steel bolt. This clip makes me very happy. At last I've managed to get rid of this random collection of 2BA bolts that I've had for ages and didn't want to use them on any models. The very final part was to take the component into the outer part of the workshop, place it on an upturned plastic box and spray it with hammerite smooth dark green paint. And that is it, the job is done. And as an afterthought, I would just like to say that lathe work can be dangerous. Always have maximum respect for these machine tools. Even the small ones can do a severe amount of damage. Never wear rings or loose clothing when working on a lathe. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.